How do we measure interocular pressure is what we deal with next. Michael Weisbohr is our speaker, and if you would be kind enough to do so. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Michael Weisbohr. I'm a um, fellow in training here at World's Eye, and it's a pleasure um, speaking here and uh, talking to you this morning. Yes. As mentioned before, intraocular pressure, the pressure within the eye, is a very important factor in glaucoma. And it's really crucial to understand what the pressure is uh, due to certain uh, reasons. First of all, we have to know. Can you hear me better now? Okay. So first of all, it's crucial to know what the pressure is because this is the way in which we can identify patients at, at risk. And the second reason is that we, know, we should know how to follow patients um, and how to treat them by knowing what their pressure is. So it's very important to get an accurate measurements of the intraocular pressure. So what is intraocular pressure? What is it? So I'd like you to imagine a car tire. And this car tire can be either properly inflated, as you can see over here, or it can be underinflated with a pressure which is too low, and you can feel this on the tire. You can almost have a flat tire with a pressure too low, or you can have a, a, a car tire with a pressure too high. And then, um, and when the pressure is too high, you can also notice this. If you press the car tire, you can press, you can feel that the pressure is, is too high. The eye also has this pressure, which is variable during the day. There's a specific place in the eye in which fluid is being manufactured constantly. And there's a different place in which this fluid is being evacuated or drainage from the eye outside. And this equilibrium is the one to determine what the pressure will be in the eye. And the pressure is not constant in a specific moment of the day, but it can change and fluctuate during the day. One person can have a specific pressure in the morning, and this pressure can change in the afternoon on one day to the other. So the pressure is definitely not something constant. It changes throughout the day and throughout time. The real challenge is how can we measure and know ex what exactly is the pressure in the eye in a specific moment. So actually, the ideas of Dr. Hans Goldman back in the 1950s um, based on his ideas, the measurement tool, which is called the Goldman tonometer, the Goldman um, tool to measure the pressure within the eye, based on his ideas, this um, device was developed. Now, what exactly is aplanation? This is the basic of understanding how, to, how do we know what the pressure is within the eye. Now, imagine this would be a balloon or the eye itself. And this yellow um, a square would be our measuring tool. In order to know what the pressure is, is within the eye, we should bring the measurement tool very closely to this eye or to the balloon and apply some pressure. And this pressure would cause aplanation of the outer surface of this balloon. It will flatten the, the um, outer surface of this balloon. And this is the way... Um, it looks like. And I would like to thank um, my daughter for letting me use her balloon. So this would be, uh, she's four and a half years old, by the way. This is the, um, the measuring um, device, and this is the way it, apply, it, it uh, creates aplanation over this balloon, and it flattens the outer surface of the balloon. And this is actually the principle of aplanation, as mentioned before. And these are also, these are to, um, I also to want to thank my younger daughter for uh, having both these, these balloons in front of me um, for this short movie. Here are two balloons. One is um, in overinflated. This balloon would have the higher pressure. And this one, you can barely see the wrinkles over here. This one has lower pressure. And this is the measurement tool. So for the balloon, for the ball which is overinflated, 
you would have to apply a very strong force on this balloon in order to flatten the uh, surface of the balloon. And this is as opposed to this balloon, which is underinflated. You'd have to apply very, very gentle pressure on this ball, and even a very gentle pressure would create this sublimation, would flatten the uh, outer surface of the balloon at this uh, specific area. The same thing exactly would happen when we measure the pressure within the eye. So this would be the outer surface of the eye. This would be called the cornea, which is, um, um, as mentioned before, uh, sort of a clear window of the eye. But this is the outer surface of the eye. And this would be the tip of, uh, of the measuring tool that would create a planation, would come closer and actually have contact with the outer surface of the eye and create this aplanation. So what is the recipe or what are the steps for measuring intraocular pressure? Let's go one by one. The first step would be the installation of drops in, uh, onto the eye. And these drops are numbing drops that are every patient before touching the eye um, every patient must have these drops because otherwise he'd blink or it would be painful. So it's very important to have these drops, these numbing drops, into, onto the eye. The second uh, step would, have, would be to apply this orange dye, which would help uh, me, the examiner, see better what's going on on the outer surface of the eye. Sometimes these there, there is a specific bottle which combines this um, the drops, the numbing drops with the dye itself. So you don't have to do these two steps. It's only one step of putting the drop with the dye itself. After the eye is numbed and has the dye in it, I would turn the blue light on and have the machine, the Goldman Applanation Tonometer, uh, and bring it closer to the eye, to the cornea. And I would create a very, very gentle... I would apply very gentle pressure on the cornea. Now, the, as I mentioned before, the amount of pressure, the amount of force that I would apply on the cornea is proportional to the pressure in the eye. So I can adjust the amount of, of force that is being brought on the cornea by turning this wheel right over here. So I just turn the wheel and apply more or less force until I reach perfect aplanation of the cornea until the cornea is completely flat in this very, very small area of aplanation right over here. And how do I know this is exactly what happens? How do I know that I really flatten the cornea in a precise manner? Well, this is my view when I look at through my um, um, microscope, I look into your cornea, into the, the patient's cornea, I would see the outline of the, of the measuring machine. Here is the measuring, measurement device, and here's the cornea, and here's the outline of the, the circle. Now, you would imagine that this, would be a per, this should be a perfect circle, but there is a, a pr two prisms that would split this perfect circle into two halves. Okay, this is the superior half, and this is the inferior half. And once these two halves have a specific alignment, which I would see just like that, this is the alignment I'm looking at, when I, and I will turn my wheel until I get this exact alignment. And when this exact alignment occurs, I can see what, what's the amount of force that's being applied on the corner, and this would be the right pressure in the eye. So if I apply... Um, if the pressure is very high and I, and I apply very little force on the eye, I would see these um, um, two circles or two half circles far from each other. And as I adjust my, uh, the little wheel that apply the force, I will bring these two half circles into this specific alignment. And once I reach this alignment, this tells me the cornea is flattened and I know exactly what the pressure within the eye is. So this is the gold standard for measuring intraocular pressure. Uh, this measuring device is out there for um, more than 50 years probably, but there's also newer devices as the one who's we have right here for screening. 
This is the Tonopen device. Um, this is a handheld device. It, it is a little less accurate than the Goldman, uh, but still it's a very good and reliable device. And in this device, again, the eye is being numbed, and then just a light touch onto the eye would provide a digital reading of the pressure within the eye. There are all sorts of other tonometers or pressure measuring devices being uh, developed and recently self-monitoring, home monitoring devices um, are something that people are, actually it's, it's, it's available right now um, for people to use and these are uh, some older tonometers that were used previously. Glaucoma, as you know, um, does, not happen, does not occur only in humans. There's a dog with glaucoma and has, me has pressure being measured with tonopen tonometer. And the future of measuring intraocular pressure would be would, uh, the idea of, is of trying to get continuous measurement of the pressure within the eye, let's say at least for 24 hours. This is similar to having blood pressure monitoring throughout the day, in the morning, and the evening. Um, there is research trying to um, use a special contact lens that would be um, put in the eye, and this would transmit the pressure throughout the day, and every blink we have during the day would be monitored, and any change in pressure, even on every blink of us, which will potentially elevate the pressure, uh, this could be recorded, and this w may tell us if we have uh, fluctuations of the pressure during the day, and this is something we're heading to. We're not there yet, but there's a lot of research doing um, in that direction. So just to summarize, how do we measure the pressure? We put the drops in, we put in the dye, we apply uh, the, the force with this blue, um, with a blue light. This is what I see. We turn the wheel, and then we would know what the pressure is. Thank you very much. And if you have any attention, any questions, I'd like. Uh, any questions? Thank you very much. I have a question. Yes, please. For the dilatation of the eye, uh, Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, the pressure can definitely change after putting the drops, the dilating drops into the eye. So some doctors would um, measure pressure both before the pupils are dilated and after the pupils are, dil are dilated. Some would just measure it beforehand, but the, the dilating drops by itself can result in elevation in pressure, and this is normal, in about two to four millimeter, two to four points. And this is something which is um, normal, and we take this into consideration. I always ask the doctor, please measure the pressure before anything. I'm sorry, Yes, so this can affect the pressure. Yes, please. I'm curious to know, where do you see the pressure? Uh, where do you actually see it after you've gotten your semicircles lined up? Okay, so let me, is it okay if I get back to, the, to my presentation? No, I'm sorry. Can we get back to my presentation again? Okay. So I showed you before this uh, small wheel, which I turn, and this would apply the force itself. Here is the wheel itself. And on the wheel, uh, there are numbers over here, and the numbers here, after I finish applying the force, I can read these numbers and I can show it maybe even more clearly. Um, over here, this is the wheel I'm turning, and this is um, number one, which stands for 10 points, and this is number two, which stands for 20 points. And in this specific person, the pressure would be 14 because it's 10, 12, 14. So when I look at this specific part, I would see 14. This is the pressure uh, within the eye. And this is a very accurate method for measuring the pressure. Yes, please. Is there a self-monitoring um, device to measure your intraocular pressure? Is, is there a device for home monitoring? You can make a blood 
pressure monitoring? Yes. Yeah, so, is, is it commercially available? Is, the, is it available, the device, to measure the pressure for 24 hours? It's not available yet. It is uh, a research. It is in research, definitely. This very nice contact lens that I show you is not something that really exists. The devices right now is a huge thing that are being put onto the eye with many wires, and this is something that's being done in labs. It's not something that you can take home. But maybe within a few years it will be available. There are, however, some moni uh, uh, home monitoring devices uh, which are available, they are pricely, of course, but you have devices that, in which you can um, try and measure the pressure. They're not as accurate as the Goldman tonometer, but they can give you a rough estimation. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.